In this video, I'm going to cover the VLOOKUP function and show you the two ways you can use it. Now, most people only know one way. Plus, I'll cover some common reasons it might give you errors. Be sure to watch right to the end where I cover the risks of using VLOOKUP so you don't get caught out. Before we dive in, I want to point out that if you have a Microsoft 365 subscription, formerly known as Office 365, then you should use XLOOKUP, which is a new and much improved version of VLOOKUP. You can click the link at the top of the video to see my XLOOKUP tutorial. And for those of you with Excel 2019 or earlier who don't have XLOOKUP, let's get started. The VLOOKUP function looks up a value, let's say Doug, in a table like this commission rates table, and it returns the item on the corresponding row from the column you specify. For example, the commission rate. It's simple in its concept, but it's incredibly useful. To write the formula, type in equals VL and then press tab to complete the function name and opening parentheses. The first argument is the lookup value. Here I can type in Doug's name in double quotes because it's text, but I want to be able to copy this formula down. So I'm going to delete that and select the cell containing Doug. The second argument is the lookup table. That's my commission rates table here. Notice I'm not selecting the headers, I don't need those. The other thing to note is the lookup value is in the first column of my table array. I'm going to press the F4 key to absolute the reference to the table range so that when I copy the formula down, it stays focused on the commission rates table. The third argument is the column number of the table containing the value that I want returned. In this case, it's the rate and that's the second column. Notice it's not the second column of the spreadsheet, it's the second column in the range I selected in my table array argument. Also notice that the data being returned is in a column to the right of the lookup values column. This is really important because VLOOKUP can't return data from columns to the left, although there is a clever workaround with choose, but I won't go into that today. The last argument is asking whether you want to find an exact or approximate match for Doug. In this case, we want to find Doug's commission rate. We don't want Dave's or Brian's rate, so we want the exact match. I'm going to arrow down to select it, tab to enter it into my formula, close parentheses, press enter. Now I can copy my formula down, just hover your mouse in the bottom right and double click. And it's that easy. If you make a change in the lookup table, for example, let's give Doug an increase, you can see it automatically feeds through. Let's say we also want to get the region from the commission rates table. It'd be great if I could just copy this formula across and it automatically picks up the region data. And one way we can do this is with the columns function. The columns function returns the number of columns in a reference. We'll start again. I'm just going to delete this. And we'll start from scratch, VLOOKUP. We're looking up Doug. Now here I want to absolute reference the column so that when I copy it across into column F, it stays anchored looking up the names in column C. The table array is the same and we want to F4 to absolute that reference. And the column index number is where we can use the columns function. Now make sure it's columns with an S, not column. Now the rate is in the second column, so I just want to count the first two columns. I want to absolute reference the H, so we're just going to type a dollar sign in there, close my parentheses on columns. Now if I select columns and press F9, you can see it returns a 2. It's going to control Z to undo that. The last argument is whether we want an exact or approximate match. I want exact match. Now the other way to specify exact match is with a zero. That's the numeric equivalent of false. So it's a bit shorter, we'll use zero this time. And I'll press enter, you can see it's found Doug's rate. And now when I left click and drag to copy it across, it also finds the region. And if we look in the formula bar, you can see the columns formula is now referencing H through I, which returns a three for the column reference number argument in VLOOKUP. This method works when the columns you want data return from are in the same consecutive order as the table where you're entering your VLOOKUP formula. As we can see here, VLOOKUP is finding the rate, then the region, and the commission rates table also has the rate column, then the region column. And I can copy both formulas down with a double click in the bottom right. 
Another way we can automate populating the column index number argument is using the match function. And this is handy if the columns that you want returned aren't consecutive. For this to work, the names up here must match the names in the lookup table. Now match is very similar to VLOOKUP, except instead of returning a value, it returns the row or column number of a reference. To show how match works, I'm just going to enter it in this empty cell here, and we can see it on its own. Like VLOOKUP, the first argument in match is the value we want to look up. Well, we want to look up the column label here, and I'm going to F4 to absolute the row reference, comma, where are we looking it up? We're looking up the headers in our commission rates table. And notice I'm starting in column H, just like my table array reference in the VLOOKUP formula starts in column H. F4 to absolute the reference. We want an exact match, which is zero, close parentheses on match. And you can see it's found rate in this row here in the second column. Now, if I copy match across, you can see it finds region in this row here in the third column. So now that we have match working, I can control C to copy it. And we'll just replace the columns formula with match control V to enter it. And I'll press enter. Now I can copy it across. And I can double click to copy it down. Obviously nothing's changed. But if you look in the formula bar, you can see that now all the formulas contain match. And if I insert a column here, you can see match is updated. Now it's finding region in the fourth column of the range. And you can see that match is better than using the columns function when you have columns that are not in a consecutive order. The examples we've looked at so far are all finding an exact match. But another way we can use VLOOKUP is to find an approximate match. This is handy when you want to find a range that a value falls in between. For example, looking at the commission rates table here, you can see the rate is based on a scale where sales between 0 and 500 and 1% commission and sales between 501 and 1000 and 2% and so on. Again, we can use VLOOKUP to look up the sales amount. And um, we're looking it up in the commission rates table. Let me F4 to absolute reference to the table. The column index number, well, the rate is in the third column. And here is where we want to use the approximate match. And that's true. Now, the numeric equivalent for true is 1. So we'll just type in a 1. It's a little easier. And you can see VLOOKUP returns 5% for Doug. And if we look at the table, we can see Doug's sales fall in between 3,001 and 4,000, which is 5%. Now, it's important to know that VLOOKUP is actually only using the first column to find the match. It looks for an exact match, but if it can't find one, it will find the value that's higher than the lookup amount, and then it moves down one row and returns the rate. This is why it's essential that the data is sorted in ascending order. Now, the data in column H is really just to illustrate the bands. VLOOKUP doesn't use the data in column H at all. We can, in fact, delete it, and the formula still works. I can copy it down. You can see it's not dependent on this column at all. Now, I often see people trying to write a nested if formula to achieve this result when all they really need is a VLOOKUP formula using approximate match on a sorted list. One of the most common causes for VLOOKUP errors is text masquerading as numbers. For example, if I put an apostrophe in front of this number, and let's add the dollar sign and the comma separator, on the face of the cell, it looks like a number, but you can see VLOOKUP has returned an error, indicating that a match wasn't found. Now we can usually easily fix numbers formatted as text by multiplying it by a one. So I'll copy the cell containing a one, and then paste special. We're going to go values, and we want to multiply them. Click OK. You can see it's now converted it to a number because VLOOKUP has been able to evaluate. So I don't need the one anymore. Let's delete that. Another common problem is leading or trailing spaces. Again, you can't see them on the face of a cell. So if I were to add a space to Doug's name here, now VLOOKUP returns errors because it's looking for Doug with a space on the end. And in this cell, there's no space for Doug. 
We can use the trim function to get rid of these trailing spaces and then your VLOOKUP formulas should evaluate correctly. Now VLOOKUP is a divisive function because it's very easy for users to make a mistake and not complete that last argument that specifies whether the search is for an exact or approximate match. If you omit this argument, for example, let's just delete the zero, it's going to default to an approximate match. And now Doug's rate returned is zero. You can see in the list here, that's for Brian. And this is because the list isn't sorted. When a VLOOKUP does an approximate match search, it doesn't search from top to bottom in a linear fashion. Instead, it does a binary search. And the binary search algorithm is a method of finding an item in an ordered list. And it's much faster than a linear search, which starts at the top and makes its way down one row at a time. That said, since Excel 2016 onwards, the exact match and approximate match searches are on par because the Excel Calc Engine has had some improvements. Anyhow, I digress. Binary search starts in the middle. In this case, it started at Larry. L is later in the alphabet than D, so it eliminates the second half of the data on the basis that this should be a sorted list, therefore Doug won't appear after Larry. It then starts looking at the rows above Larry. It gets to Brian. B is after D, so it eliminates the data before Brian and returns the rate for Brian on the basis that B is the closest match to Doug. In other words, an approximate match. If I were to sort this data in alphabetical order, so we'll go data and sort A to Z, you can see now it finds Doug's rate because the list is sorted. Now, because VLOOKUP doesn't return an error when performing an approximate match, it can easily result in some monumental spreadsheet errors. And it's for this reason that some say that the best way to avoid potential mistakes like this is to simply use index and match instead of VLOOKUP. But that's a lesson for another day. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And don't forget to share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.